everybody and welcome to Graphic Intention. Today I'm going to introduce you to this guy. This is my canvas inventory binder. Um, I just created this little page in the front and then the spine bind, uh, this spine label in um, my paint program and I thought it was really cute but I'm going to introduce you to what's inside. So I created this page. Um, it's got all of the information that I wanted to document for each of these canvases. I was going to make it a little bigger, but I decided that this would be a good size so that I could put my images on there and not have to have them like really, really tiny. I did create, um, this is a sheet. Uh, it is an eight and a half by 11. And then I have these lines in there so that I can make my images the correct size so that when I cut my, my page, I just have to do two cuts and then um, I have the four pictures. I did it this way because I use full page uh, labels to print my images on and by um, having this set up the way that it is, I know that um, it will fit on the um, page in the binder if it fits inside these little squares. So this is just kind of showing you how I do that particular portion of um, resizing all of the images and making sure that they will fit on the pages inside um, the binder itself. These are also a sneak preview of some of the custom uh, diamond paintings I will be doing in the future. Um, I will talk about that later. Anyway, so let's get started. Uh, this is the Diamond Paintings book. Um, I did label it Volume 1 because if I wanted to expand, if I plan on doing this for a long time and need more volumes, then um, I will be able to do that. This first page is the items that I have ordered, and once I uh, once they arrive, I mark them out. If I'm still waiting for them, they're right there, so I don't have to sit there and flip through the whole book to figure out which paintings I'm still waiting on. So, um, as you can see, the information that I have here is the design name, the seller, the drills, whether it's round or square, the size, the date it was purchased and arrived, the price I paid or how much I sold it from, the uh, hours it was completed, the rating I gave it, and then the notes that I wanted to remember about that particular canvas. Usually the notes correspond to the rating, so if I don't give it a five stars, I'll just jot down on there why it got a lower rating. Um, the orange tags that I have on the side of the pages are for the works in progress. I have three of them that I'm working on. What I do is I kit up all of my canvases with putting my drills in plastic bags. I keep track of the hours that I work on each canvas and then I write the total hour on my completed um, box. But because here this is a five panels, I don't want to have to keep track of all five little baggies. So when I complete each panel, I just jot that down on that left side there. When I finish that letter E, then I'll combine all of the totals and put that in there. Uh, this is just a reminder. I do have the partial of the um, night tea jar video time-lapse already posted if you want to go check that out. And then this is Weeping Angel. Both of those canvases I'm going to have to fix. So I am waiting for the adhesive that I have ordered to fix that Weeping Angel. Once that gets in, I will post two videos of how I um, fixed the Weeping Angel and the Night Tea Jar canvases because right now they are unworkable in my book. Um, then this is just kind of a preview of some of the canvases that I've ordered and that are waiting to be drilled. And then here is a completed, um, the mind blown. I also had that video up just to show you what it looks like. It got the five star rating and it was flawless. Um, up there in the upper right hand corner where I have the numbers written, those are the numbers corresponding directly to the canvases. And I write those down once I've done the unboxing video. So that kind of just gives me a visual idea of 
what I've unboxed for you guys um, and what I haven't unboxed, or at least what I have made the videos for and what I haven't made videos for. Also, I just kind of jot down here if it's got a really crappy packaging. Um, I know that most canvases will come in good packaging. That's why I don't have a box specifically for that um, area. Then the back of the book, I have a whole bunch of pre-printed um, pages so that when I get new um, canvases ordered, I can just print off the sticker sheet and write in all of the information and I'm good to go. Another thing that I wanted to document is what folder I have each of these canvases in. This was before I created my hanging folders. So I just write down in the bottom that this is in hanging around number three. Um, I also wanted to document where they moved. Um, throughout my system. So on this nice whimsical mushrooms, uh, this has already gone away. It is no longer in my house. So I thought this would be a really good place to show you how I do that. Uh, the first thing I do is I write down that it's in folder hanging around number one. And then once uh, it goes once I've drilled it and it moves on to the next folder, then I mark out hanging around number one and I write down where it went. So from here, it went to completed number one. So then uh, it left completed number one when it was gifted to charity. So I marked out the completed and left gifted to charity without the line through it and wrote that it was not sold, it was donated. So I crossed out sold and wrote don donated up there um, in the box above. That way, um, if I know that a, a canvas has been unboxed and I want to know where it is, I can easily find it. But that is my introduction to the diamond painting canvas inventory binder. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.